All right, welcome back. It is a cold one here in northern Michigan. Uh, right now it's about 7 degrees. The wind chills somewhere in the uh, minus 14 range. Um, I'm nestled here in Traverse City, Michigan, which is up by the 45th parallel, nestled along the lakeshore of uh, Lake Michigan. And uh, just to give you an example of what we got, let's uh, take a walk outside. It's, uh, it's pretty, but pretty damn cold. I got about 22 inches of snow where I'm at. And um, boy, oh boy, am I ready for the, uh, for the warm weather to get back on the road. So today I want to talk a little bit about long distance riding. And in my opinion, what are the necessities, at least for me, on those long trips? Like we talked about in the intro, today we're going to be talking a little bit about long distance riding. And I'm talking, you know, 500 miles plus a day. Um, everyone's body style and everyone's tolerances is, is different. You know, every, I look on these Facebook groups, everyone's always asking about the best seat. And it's, it's just super, super specific to the person. Um, everyone has, has a style, what they're expecting, their previous, you know, if they have any injuries or their body type or anything like that. So the very first thing I switched out on my bike were the bars. I had the bone stock bars. Ended up switching those out for the 14-inch Arlen Ness Modular Bars. And we'll take a look at those right now. All right, like we talked about, these are the 14-inch Arlen Ness Modulars. Actually, I think they're considered 13-inch. Um, but in all honesty, from down, down there to the top of here is like 13 and 7 eighths or some shit. So what <laughs> I do like about these bars is the ability, with these being modulars, to loosen these up and I can pull this in. And when I'm on those long rides, it, it's nice to be able to do that. Um, they're sturdy as hell. I have reamed on these and reamed on these, and they do not move. Um, not only do they look good, but just the comfort of them is outstanding. I ended up moving my mirrors down here. These are stock Harley mirrors. I just didn't like them sticking up here too much. And it um, takes a little bit of getting used to. There's probably a better solution for me out there than that. But um, for right now, the, I've learned to work with them, I'll say. And I'm, I'm pretty big on, on the safety aspect. I'm always looking around uh, 360 degrees as I'm riding. So another thing is the seat. So I have a Saddleman Road Sofa. And um, from day one, the seat was absolutely amazing. I went from the, the stock seat when I bought the bike, which is a bone stock, regular size seat with uh, had the heated heated seats on there. Um, I immediately took those off. I bought a Harley Davidson tall boy seat from a dealership that was going out of business. And that seat was okay, but I found myself stopping about every hundred miles or so um, to get up and walk around because it hurt my back and my hip um, with my particular injury that I have. So I ended up getting this last summer. And from day one, for me, there was zero break in to the seat. It was instantly better. Um, so now I don't stop until I need gas. I can go all day on the seat. One thing I did not realize when I purchased this seat is uh, it doesn't have the slit in here for the backrest. And it's nothing to do with saddlement or anything like that. It was just me not looking into it further. I knew they offered ones with backrest. I didn't feel I needed one at the time. But I did think it did have the slit in there. So just a warning, um, these saddlement road sofas... They're actually two completely different seats. Um, the, the backrest has a slit with the eternal um, mechanisms in there for the backrest. The ones without the backrest, you, you have no option. So this is the carbon fiber. I thought it looked pretty good with my bike. I had carbon fiber uh, engine guards on there. One of them might have fell off on the highway. Who knows? I don't have a passenger. I am married. My wife won't even look at my bike. So... Um, this isn't as important to me. I just keep the trunk on basically to hold some shit in there. But uh, about 75% of the time, the trunk is off this bike. So another one of your touch points is your floorboards. On, on my Ultra here, I'm running these stock floorboards. I personally like them. Um, I don't like the looks of them as much, but they perform fine. Um, there's plenty of room. I wear a size 14 boot. I, I have plenty of room on them. Um, I don't feel the vibration as much as they did on my other bikes. They have, they have that, that dampening system in there. So I do enjoy these. Um, highway pegs are big. So I ended up putting some highway pegs on this bike. 
again, I got, I got long legs, big feet, and uh, I do have a right hip and right knee injury. So I run my, my pegs a little off kilter here. Well, my, usually my right one's down a little bit lower next to my brake, and the left one's up a little bit higher. Um, for when I'm cruising down the highway, that's just how I sit, kind of pimped over a little bit. But, um, and it keeps the pressure off of certain ways. I can, I can turn around and move. But um, there, that's, again, everything's a personal preference. I did try to run the, the highway pigs that came off the floorboard. I didn't like them. Um, I do know that, uh, I think it's Ciro, um, Adam Sandoval has a line out that he actually has uh, highway floorboards, I guess they're called. They're more than just a peg. They're actually um, a big space to put your foot on. I might be trying those out again because I got big clumpy feet and I'm about as nimble as a drunk elephant. So it's um, it'd just be better for me in the long run, I, I believe, but we will see. So another very important aspect is wind protection. So we've all been on the road for five, six, seven, eight hours, and you know that wind fatigue is a real deal thing. Um, it'll kick the living snot out of you. I'm all for having my knees in the breeze. I love being on a motorcycle. If I wanted to have a 20-inch windshield to be totally encapsulated, I would have took the F-350. So with that being said, I went and got myself a windshield away from the stock one, and I was going back and forth on all the different brands that we have that are available. Um, you got Clockworks, you got Freedom Shield, Memphis Shades. I found this on Amazon for $25. It has the flare on it like the uh, Clockworks has. I know I'm kind of comparing apples to oranges. It's not a clockworks, um, but it does just fine for me, especially for $25. So that's not a huge aspect for me to go and spend a bunch of money on. Um, for others, it might be, and if you do that, cool. But for me, this works just fine. I was actually just bought this as a test to go buy the clockworks, but I'm going to save myself, you know, the 200 bucks and just stick with this guy. Also, another good thing to look into are these these wind deflectors down here again these are from amazon i believe the company that these both came from is Emamachi. i'll look it up and i'll put it in the in the description below but these do great i didn't think they were going to work all that well um a buddy of mine has the the nice harley davidson um ones that move around and i was like oh let me see how it works i bought these again these were like 20 bucks 25 dollars put them on instant i mean got rid of some of the buffeting that i had when i was wearing my helmet and it, it really took care of a lot of a lot of things especially on those long long rides i do run they're not on right now but i do run lower fairings on this bike it came stock with them um, i have them off inside right now doing some uh some big detailing on them um, those are great they have the vent that goes you can open and close a little bit of storage capacity in there because this is an oh a 2012 with a 103 in it i don't have no cooled uh, liquid cooled heads or nothing so I do have a little bit of space in there to uh, throw a few things. I usually keep my, my hockey puck for my kickstand when I'm going camping in that. And some extra rags and things like that. All right, so one more thing to hit on the list is um, probably the most important thing to a lot of guys is the radio, your music. Um, I have a stock head unit in my bike. I do have some upgraded speakers and uh, an amp in it. But my head unit decided to stop working on me in July of 2023. Um, it wasn't a big deal to me because I... And again, I'm partially deaf, so I wear a AirPod in my right ear, and I can I can listen to my music, my podcasts. I do like listening to audiobooks, especially when I'm going on long, long trips. Um, it's just something to kind of relax me, keeps me focused, and I get to I get to learn something along the way. So um, I am looking at getting a different head unit put in here. I'm not sure what. Um, I I have a guy here locally in town who who does a sound stream. It's the big touchscreen. Again, I don't know if I want to spend that kind of money on a 12-year-old bike for something that's not that important to me. But having your music is something that helps keep you aware. It keeps you keeps you focused, keeps you awake. And um, and other guys are just that they go school brain dead. Um, so again, it's all personal preference what you want to do. So now we're on to stops. So I like to stop about every 150 miles to get gas. Um, my bike has about a 200-mile range. But living up here in northern Michigan, especially if you get up into the, into the UP above the bridge, um, you can go a long ways without seeing a gas station, especially when you're on those back roads. So um, about every 150-ish miles, I'll stop and uh, fill up the bike, maybe take a little walk around the, the gas station, get a drink, use the restroom, whatever, get a gas station glizzy, who knows. 
and then uh, get back on the bike and, and head out. Um, those trips are usually 10 to 15 minutes long, just enough to get the blood fl uh, flowing back into my butt and into my legs and, and onwards. Another a bit of a bougie biker thing you might want to consider if it's important to you is the heated seats and heated grips. Um, this bike came factory with both. Um, obviously, I don't have on the heated seat anymore. It just didn't fit me. I needed, I needed extended reach. And the grips, um, to me, they're just not worth the, the extra money, uh, especially if you're already changing out your bars and you're going above the fairing anyways. They really don't do that much. Um, nothing that a good set of gloves won't, won't fix for you. Um, you're, you get a little bit of, uh, of heat on your, on your palm, but your fingers are, are still ready to fall off after a, you know, 40 degree, 50 degree ride. They get pretty cold. So, you know, a $50 set of gloves will, will take care of that issue for you. Another quick thing, more of an honorable mention is going to be pipes. Now, now what do pipes have to do with long distance riding? Well, you know, the, the noise factor is critical, especially when you're riding six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours, whatever it's going to be. And you're constantly listening to that pipe just roar in your ear. It's, it's going to do some damage, and uh, it's just not healthy for you. Um, I just put on a, a tab performance set, and, and they're going to be extremely loud. I'm, a, I'm just going to see how it is when I'm riding. I'm not married to them. Um, if, it, if they're not working, I can slip out the, uh, the baffles in this bike to get a quieter set. Not a big deal. But um, we're going to see how that works. Um, I think because of my hearing issues anyways, uh, they'll, they'll probably be just fine. But um, it's something we're going to have to experiment with and see. Luckily for me, the one reason I did choose Tab Performance is that they do have baffles that are interchangeable. I can go from the zombie baffles, which are the loudest, to the mid-grade, down to the, the super quiet ones. And, um, you know, I have that option if I need to. And I, I do appreciate that. So that's something that I think more and more companies should offer, um, different, different levels of, of loudness. So that's what I got today. Nothing major. Um, we are going to be getting one out to Raining Liberty Ranch here very soon, doing a quick video and showing you guys the ranch and what they're about. And that's going to be really cool. So if you haven't watched before, Raining Liberty Ranch is a, a ranch here in Traverse City, Michigan that um, uses horses and animals to help um, veterans. So the veterans come out there, they work the ranch, they take care of the horses, they take care of the chickens, the cows, the goats, whatever else they have out there. And, um, it's just a place for them to kind of, uh, it's a peaceful place for them to come and just forget about things for a little while. And Northern Michigan Bikers is doing a benefit ride for them uh, May 25th, Saturday, May 25th, Memorial Weekend. We're doing the Some Gave All Memorial Weekend ride. And 100% um, of the proceeds from that are going to go into the ranch to help benefit the veterans that are, are there working and doing their thing. So... Um, Radiant Liberty Ranch is a is a beautiful place. It's a it's a place that's near and dear to my heart personally, and I am more than proud to be a part of this and and helping them grow and getting awareness out there. So we got a lot of cool things uh, coming up for that. Another cool ride that Northern Michigan Bikers has coming up in September is Hands to the Rescue. Hands is a local animal rescue facility that um, takes in all sorts of uh, all sorts of animals, cats, dogs. Um, they're a non-kill shelter, and they're they're amazing people. So North Michigan Bikers is going to be hosting Hogs for Dogs Poker Run, and uh, again, it's another place that's near and dear to our hearts. My my girl here, Charles. This is Charlie. She's a hands puppy. Um, she came out of the uh, hometown litter, and she's just uh, she's the best thing in the world. And we are so grateful to have her in our lives. She's uh. She's a wonderful addition to our family, and I, I'm hoping that everybody else um, is able to rescue a dog and do the same thing. So hopefully you guys will like and subscribe. Um, I'm still new to this, still learning, and uh, I hope to get a little better. If not, I'm still going to... That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. I'm not making really shitty videos for you. So um, we'll see you next time. Later.